Good afternoon, Artemis Warriors. Uh, I'm Lieutenant Commander Brown. I am one of your physical therapists here aboard Camp Pendleton. Uh, basically today, we're gonna go over some return to run progressions for you uh, postpartum. Uh, so, so definitely things to consider as you're going through this uh, to make sure you don't uh, cause any overuse injuries are to one, make sure that um, you can do those Charmin exercises that, that we showed on a previous video. Um, you know, doing the, the breathing patterns as you're going through to do exercises, as well as that you can comfortably walk one to two miles um, without any pain within your joints um, that, that is abnormal. And so as long as you can do that, usually we're looking um, at least three months postpartum, uh, then, then we can start to consider return to run progressions. And with that, when you start return to run, uh, think walk to run. You walk for three to four minutes and then you run for a minute. Uh, and then you gradually um, decrease that ratio uh, and then get to where you're just running for you know, slightly longer each time. Uh, and then and as you're doing those incremental increases, think 10%, That's, that is how much you wanna increase at a time. 10% increases um, over the matter of a week. You don't wanna run every day, so start two days a week, have two to three days in between, and then you can work your way up to three to four days a week of running at the most. Uh, so, so make sure you do that slowly. Uh, what we're going to do here today uh, with HM1 Tyree is to show you the different warm-ups as well as go over different aspects of your run to make sure uh, that we're not causing any overuse injuries as well as a cool down. Uh, so now we'll start going over the warm-up exercises. A couple things just to consider. So first, um, a good exercise to do is side steps. So we're working those muscles on the sides of our hips to help keep us, our hips level when we're going single leg stance. All right, so basically all we're doing is level one is putting the band right at your knee, keeping your toes pointed straight ahead, not turning outwards, uh, and then basically taking a small step to the side and then controlling the uh, lagging foot. Take six to eight steps to your one direction, so here to your left. And then you would do the same thing coming back to your right, just with a slight bend in the knee, keeping that core tight. And then you would do that for a minute. Um, I recommend two, two to three times uh, of doing that before you go out on a run. Again, it's good to get those hips activated. If you want to increase the difficulty, you would just slide the band down to your ankles and do the same thing. It's the same, uh, same form, keeping those toes pointed straight ahead. All right, so then the next exercise that we're going to go over is to work on the, the length of your hamstrings before you go out for a run. So some people call these toy soldiers. So you basically just, you get a five to 10 foot length of a roadway here, and then you just take one kick out and reach to the opposite hand. And again, just take about 10 feet or so going down. Uh, you would do the same thing coming back. Slow and steady, not trying to do any major high kicks, just get some range of motion within those hamstrings uh, and do that two to three times before you go out for a run. Next, the world's greatest stretch. So just to get those muscles on the inner and outer thigh, you take a big step out, put your arm down to the ground and then rotate up, come back down and step forward and then repeat to the opposite side. I tell you to do about five or six on each side down, five or six on each side back. Again, that really opens up your hips as well as get some movement within that upper back as you go out for a run. Beautiful. All right, and last, uh, last week we're gonna go over just, just calf raises. So either you can do it on flat ground or you can do it off of a step, just going up and down for a set of 15 to 20. Just slow and steady because again, you're going to really use those calves to propel yourself forward as you go for a run. Um, if you get, you know, if you're really comfortable and you've been doing this for a while, then I recommend doing single leg um, and also doing it off of a step. So when you go up, now I can come down farther than just flat ground. And that is it for your warm up. All right, so now what we're gonna do is just go over different aspects of your run. Um, so this is when you've actually gone through and you can comfortably just go out for 10, 15, 20 minutes. Uh, so I want you to remember the acronym FAST, F-A-S-T. 
So, so these things can help you prevent these overuse injuries. So for the F, fast feet. So it's your, how many times your foot hits the ground in a matter of a minute. You definitely want to be over that 170 steps per minute. Um, one good thing you can do is if you have, if you're not sure, um, there are many free apps on your phones called, that are under a metronome, and you can set that metronome to 170 and, or just to see where you are. And if you feel like you're very far under that in, in the 150s, um, you want to gradually increase that to, again, 10% um, incremental increases until you can get up above 170, even to 180. How many times that foot hits the ground would be how many times you hear that beat. So that's a good way to increase that foot, foot, uh, that foot cadence. Next, the A. The A, we're talking about arm swing. So basically what you want to do is you want to think your arms, one, you don't squeeze very tight, so you want to think you have a potato chip in your hand and you don't want to break it. But with the swing itself, you want to keep it by your side and in front of you. So from hips to chest level, back and forth, just as you see HM1 here doing. What you want not to do is basically bring that arm and go excessively behind you. What that does, especially as you increase the length of your run, you know, up to your three miles, um, that destroys energy and uses a lot that you don't need to, so it's wasting. Um, so trying to keep just hip level and above is where you want to work that pattern. S, stride. So your stride length, uh, what you want it is just basically up underneath your body, so slightly out in front of you and slightly behind. What we as females or anyone who's a little bit shorter, when we, especially when we get in formation runs or within groups, we try to overstride to keep up. So heavily overstriding puts a lot of pressure on your hips and can cause a lot of impingement and injury, um, especially after you've had your baby. And we want to prevent that. So keeping that stride just nice and comfortable um, with, in front and behind uh, will do well for you. And the last thing is track. So track means for foot alignment. So basically with foot alignment, you want to keep, again, those feet right up underneath you. Um, think like you're running along a line on the road. Okay, so I'm keeping those feet separated so that line stays right in between my feet. Two things I want to prevent is crossover. So one foot going heavily in front of the other and crossing back and forth over that line. And the other is going very wide. Again, sometimes we get into this pattern of going very wide because we feel unbalanced. Again, that is a destruction of energy uh, that you don't want to lose, especially if you start to get really fatigued. So if you notice yourself doing any of these things, the, the wide steps, um, you know, the big arm swings, any of that, a lot of times that means you're just not conditioned to go to that, you know, longer distance. So gradually that transition increase over time um, definitely is a mark to hit. If you have joint pain, knee pain, and you can start to run, you want to take that down and make sure that, hey, you're, you're throwing in those hard impact activities, you're throwing in the strength training,
uh, thoracic rotation. So you're just gonna lay on either side. You're gonna keep those knees bent up to 90, right? And then now all you're gonna do is lay those shoulders back. As you do that, you wanna make sure that those hips stay down and you're not letting those hips rotate back. So you can either, one, let gravity be your guide and hold it down, or if you need to, you can take this arm and hold it down as well. Same thing, four to five deep breaths, 20 to 30 seconds, and you come back up, and you have two to three times on both sides. The last thing you're gonna do is you're gonna do a pinky stretch. You can see that outer hip. to help over in physical therapy. Good luck, Artemis Warriors.